I'm craving more elevation on my board, and crafting a tower is a simple solution. But how can I find a new angle? Turning a tower into a tabletop paradise. Hello folks and welcome to Dice Chatter. My name is Donnie and over the past week or so I have taken the template I created in my last video and have turned it into an awesome looking tower. It does practically everything I want it to do on the tabletop. It offers multiple locations for models to battle, vantage points for those pesky archers, and it looks pretty damn cool. But as I have constructed this tower, how can we make it more interesting? What are some other fun ways we can take my Dice Chatter template and create another awesome structure? For those interested, check the description for the free PDF download, and why not do all the other socials at the same time? Subscribing, commenting, and liking the video all give the channel a bit of help. So without further ado, let's dive right into the build. Cutting out the template and gluing it down to some construction paper is the first big step. While I snip and cut away at these arches, I keep wondering how this tower will look. The template allows for a near infinite number of options and creations, which can lead me to a bit of uh, analysis paralysis. All I know is that I don't want it to be a series of squares like the one I created off camera. Maybe this is an opportunity to try out something unique. Though I don't want to overcomplicate the build, but knowing me, I want it to be special, which can lead us down a path of complexity. I've decided to experiment today and attempt another basic shape, the triangle. I've never really attempted to use this shape in my terrain building before, and I'll be honest, I had to do a bit of basic algebra and some horrible memories resurfaced. So much for not making it complicated. I took a bit of time drawing on my little whiteboard, thinking of the sides, corners, and angles of each of these shapes. Just like my other tower, we will have multiple levels for minis to fight and travel across. And as long as my geometry and math are correct, this tower should shape up quite well. And to help shape these triangles into a rising structure, we need a strong foundation. I make sure to weigh down the build with some metal BBs. Some heft is important for terrain builds, especially for those taller structures who are at the mercy of a flamboyant hand or a teasing tape measure. Furthermore, the arch template can even be used on the inner walls and gives us a good opportunity to make something aesthetically pleasing. At the end of the day, take your time crafting the foundation. I believe it is the most important part of this terrain build. I mean, take a look. At the state it is right now, it is an actual functional 3D piece of terrain that can be used on the tabletop. All it really needs now is just a few bricks and some color, and we will have ourselves a ruined stone tower. So let's make this tabletop tower visually pleasing. As like all my foam brick builds, I dip into the classic A, B, and C bricks. Consistency with a bit of flair keeps my terrain builds fun, as well as allowing them all to start meshing and blending with one another. As you may have seen in my previous terrain build, we did our best to complement and create interesting and functional features on each arch. And we plan to do that again today with these towers. I find starting at the bottom and working our way up is the best way to wrap my mind around the style and scheme of this terrain build. There isn't much advice I can give during this bricklaying process. There are thousands upon thousands of configurations and ways to lay out these foam bricks. Though I'd say some decent advice is to think about the setting of these towers. Where will they be located? Maybe an abandoned medieval city, an elven sanctuary, or maybe down in the ninth layer of hell. The things that I keep reminding myself during this step is to keep an open mind, be willing to try something different, and of course allow yourself to screw up here and there. I goofed up a lot on the first tower, and I found interesting ways to get around these little inconsistencies. Or, you know, bricks not lining up how I want them to. Things like the underside curvature was a bit difficult to wrap my head around, and in a literal sense, my hands as well. I guess some good advice would be to give yourself some room so that you can place a few bricks down and not be restricted by your own appendages. Yet in time, the bottom half of this tower has come together. I like how it has a sense of organization, though at the same time, it looks a bit rough around the edges. In a good way, of course. For the top half of this tower, I get my foundations together once again and go through some of those exact same steps and thought processes. I did have some conscious thoughts about making these towers a bit more modular, 
leaving the bottom and top half separate and not hot gluing everything together. Your mileage may differ, but with an intricate and big build like this, I wanted to keep everything together and create an interesting and exciting terrain build. So the bricks have been laid and glued down to the foundation. The art style is a bit different on each of these two towers, but they still look as if they could have been created by the same society of people or creatures. The big question now is who created these towers? And how are we going to paint these structures so that they blend well on my wargaming board? I will admit, during the Prime and Zenithal step, I was still trying to decide on a color scheme for both of these towers. I knew I wanted both of them to be the same scheme, so that they fit well on the table as a unique pair, and I also knew I didn't want to go the typical brown coloration I have done on most of my recent terrain builds. When everything finally dried, I decided to try out a green theme. I think it'll look pretty good on the table alongside some vegetation like these twisted swamp trees I made a little while ago. For the painting, I do a lot of over brushing with my darkest color and eventually work in some stippling, dry brushing, and get nice opaque coverage over some select stones. The key here is to blend everything together and trust the process. Every time I paint a new build, I get to a point during the multitude of steps where it looks like hot garbage and I always need to remind myself it'll look better when it's all finished. The painting takes a minute or two letting everything dry and once that is complete we can move on to an even more terrifying step. Joint compound, spackle, whatever you want to call it. This product is the key to making these buildings look unique and properly constructed. We push this goop with a touch of water into each crack and crevice. It's best to wipe away any excess spackle with a clean and dry paper towel. I even decided to use some q-tips and makeup sponges to help out with the process. You gotta make sure to let this dry for a good amount of time, 24 hours or so. Then we can properly blend these stone towers with our board and my other terrain builds. For griming everything up, I really enjoy using some Army Painter washes through the airbrush. It adds a sense of character and age to each structure. I did also add some skulls and rope prior to this step. I figure why not add a bit more character to this build as we move along, getting closer and closer to the build's completion. Compared to all of the other steps in this process, adding grime and age to these towers was quick and relaxing. And once it all dries, going over everything with an extremely light dry brush of an off-white, adding some some interesting graffiti with a white ink, and of course you can never go wrong with a bit of blood splatter. There is no doubt I enjoy these new ruined stone towers. The amount of playable space on my wargaming board has increased and has even added more verticality onto the table. Though there are some big questions I need to ask myself when we look at these glamour shots. Do I enjoy this new angle of terrain building? Will the triangle and diamond shape become a new thing? I guess I truly don't know the answer to these questions, but some comments and input from you could help me figure out some future plans and builds. And hopefully over time, we can create something out of this world. As always, I want to thank my patrons for helping me and the channel reach new levels and heights, figuratively and literally. Until next time, folks, I want to thank you all for watching, and of course, happy gaming.